Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Thank you for listening to Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. And if you're listening, please click on like or subscribe. We value your comments. We value your criticism because that's how the podcast will grow. Thank you again for viewing. Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. No, thanks, uh, Cappuccino, for inviting this disgruntled man. I hope you have seen by yourself. Yeah, no, no, I see you are disgruntled. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, I would give the people of War 10 water. I will never go and bring Abu Mnada, Abu Makaj, while people are struggling with water. My Lord. This man could give me explosives without telling me that it's an explosive. That's abuse. That's child abuse. Yeah, but it was for it was a profession. I was a bodyguard of Christian for some for so many years in exile. I can openly say, say that Christian would have joined the Jacobs to form this current party. So during those negotiations, were you happy with President Cyril Ramaphosa being part of? No, we questioned where does this man come from? <laughs> I didn't even know whether this man is a politician or what. I only saw him when he go, went to receive Mandela with an umbrella, carrying I didn't know whether he's a bodyguard or what. We didn't know that man. So you still maintain that what the party stands for, which is Mkondo says, is to fix the ANC? No, I've got nothing to, to fix in the ANC. The ANC is rotten to the core. Just talk. With DJ Cappuccino. Welcome to another episode of Just Talk with DJ Cappuccino. Today I'm having a veteran uh, whose struggle credentials are unquestionable. In the studio I'm with Tate Jack Lulamil. Uh, please tell us who you are, introduce yourself to the guests, and also give us uh, your political background. Uh, thanks, uh, DJ Cappuccino, and your viewers. My real names are Vedi the Serum Jack. Actually, the Jack's name, it's a fake. Mm. Um, when the apartheid system was trying to redeploy the former prisoners from Robben Island, my father was from there. So he had to change the surname. Mm. The real uh, surname of my family is Tale. Okay. So he had to switch the surname and also make it simple to the security agents. Yes. And give them an English surname. Mm. The real surname of the family is Tale. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. But where, where, where are your politics coming from? I want, us, uh, I want you to take us to uh, that place when you started to have political consciousness. I don't know whether you were three, whether you were six, whether you were nine, whether you were 15. But that time when you said, situation is not right and I need to start fighting for my people. Yes, uh, politically, I as a person, I was inspired by Steve Biko. I loved uh, black consciousness. I was at the age of 10 years around that time. And I remember my first operation. We bent our primary school. And then from there, yeah. I bent the shop. You were the one with the match, with the match stick? Yes. Yeah. I bent the shop at my area in Port Elizabeth, New Brighton. Yeah. So after that, I was arrested at the age of 10. We were arrested as a group. But what saved me mm. in court, they asked me, who is that person sitting there? It was a judge. Mm. But the way he was so dressed, he looked like a, a reverend from Rome. So I said he's a reverend. But I think you knew he's a judge. No, I didn't. It was for my first time to be in court. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought it was a reverend. They told me that, no, this one, you must release it. Yeah. Hey. Is a kid. Is a kid. Mm. I then, during the death of Steve Biko, I wanted to, to, go, to go to the funeral. Mm. So my mother was monitoring my movements. Mm. 
Mm. On the third date of departure with that bus, she caught me right handed next to the door of the bus. Oh, wait, too. So I couldn't go. Mm. And then myself and my friend, uh, the late Comrade Makarov, who also trained in Angola, we escaped from home. At, at what age? That time? Um, I was taken by then, it was 1979. We escaped to go and attend the, the conference of the of Corsas. Mm. Yeah, but we lied to our parents. We said we were going to see his father in the villages. Then you left? We left. Both families didn't know where, where our whereabouts. Then, then tell me, you succeeded? We succeeded yeah. to attend the conference. Mm. Yeah, because we had a bit of connections. Yeah. Yeah. When we came back, that's when we launched, we launched uh, Cossas in, in, in the Eastern Cape. It was in Port Elizabeth. Yes. And then I was deployed also in this district to be in charge of the formations of launching courses in different schools. Mm. I started with my school, senior primary school by then, mm. NS Corsa. How I started it, I bombed one class. <laughs> I think I was possessed with the with bending schools. Yeah. I was under that system. Yeah. You were an arsonist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I was arrested again in 1980. That's when we were hit. At that time, I was black -sumped. 1980, uh, it means by then you were around 15. Yes. Yeah. And then I was beaten. Serious beating? Yes, yeah, serious beating. And then my, my legs were cemented. I slept outside. They put cement on they your legs? They put cement on my legs. That's why I like to put on pushes. Um, then I was then uh, recruited to be an underground operative of Mkondoesis by a comrade who was called the Comrade Dobla, my daughter. This man could give me explosives without telling me that it's an explosive. That, that's abuse, that's child abuse. Yeah, but it was, for, it was a progressive one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a progressive abuse. Yeah. He just, put, he just tells me that put this thing in a dustbin and leave immediately. After you put it? After you put it, immediately when you get into a car, that big sound comes in. And I remember you are undetected because you are a child. Exactly. No one expects you uh, to... Nobody expects you uh, to be carrying anything dangerous. Exactly. I'm not yet. Because you already finished our interview. Yeah. Then you put it in a bin, you run. I ran, just disappear, getting to him because he was riding a motorbike. Yeah. He just waits for a few minutes and then the explosive goes. A big sound. I don't even remember that it's me who put that thing there. You're thinking it's a sound, whatever. Hey. Mm. So he also ensured that uh, I must bodyguard. The Cosa 7, you remember the story of Cosa 7? Cosa 7, no. East, in Eastern Cape. Yeah. You and the Leawa, Brenda Patela, Abonambe, Guabo Poichichana, that seven. Those were your peers? Those were my peers, but I was also instructed to put it at them. So, while I was busy continuing doing my operations mm. without knowing, um, I was also responsible for their safety. Yes. So when they left, those comrades, in 1985, there was this 
Reverend that I didn't know. Yes. He just came in because at that time I was underground at uh, Andileya was place at the uh, grandmother of Andileya. Yes. I was staying with there. I was no longer staying at home. But they knew uh, that, they that were you are revolutionary. They were, look, they were looking for me. Uh, when they left, there was this reverend who came to see me. Yes. This reverend is the one who showed me the direction, how I must live with with a, a sense of agency. Because you're going to be caught. Yes. Yes. They were looking for me. And he said to me, you don't have a choice. If you don't live today, you, you, won't, you won't see the light of tomorrow. And he said, I must organize some, some few comrades to go with them. Luckily, I had, a, I had money with me because uh, my aunt had sent me to go and pay rent. I remember during the time of rent. Yeah. And my two friends were selling dach. Yeah. So we took that money off dach with the rent. We left. <laughs> you had a good budget. We to, had a good budget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We left to Lesotho. And Lesotho, we crossed that big river in Lesotho. That one which was full of crocodiles. We didn't think about crocodiles because their life was at stake. You just uh, had to go. And he told us that you must leave at this time of the morning hours because at around seven, the Sadaf deploys around that area. So we crossed that river. After crossing the river, we arrived in Lesotho. Um, you, you, you first get detained until you are released by the representatives of the ANC or PAC. So by then we had an old man called Dindlov. He came to us and tested us. He said, Elizabeth, mm. once you respond, you say Elizabeth. He says, no, this one is not ours. <laughs> So uh, he came. It is where it's a PAC. PAC up. It's like a month to them. Yes. So once yes. you respond, it means you're not in court. You are not. You are not ANC. You're not ANC. Yes. So he came. He tested us. It is where we all kept quiet. He said, "I know these are ANC members. Yes. These are our people." <laughs> then they released us. They took us through the processes under difficult situations in Lesotho. Lesotho was well infiltrated. Mm. by uh, the system of uh, the previous regime. Many of your comrades died there. Eh? They died there. Because, like, uh, the apartheid had, had, assisted, had its, its people. Yeah, they, they were they were bulldozing Lesotho. Mm. Yeah. So, they tried all those tactics until we, we went to through the processes of United Nations. You first stay in the houses of the ANC until you finish all the paperwork. Then you are taken to a refugee center, which is which is which was under United Nations. Yes. Once you are there, then you are safe from the apartheid spies. But they wait for you when you get that chance of going to town. If you won't come easy. You must really maneuver when you go to town. So we stayed there for some time. Mm. After the Soto, we went to Swaziland. We just passed Swaziland. We changed the flight. Remember the flight from, from Lesotho to Swaziland? It must cross over South Africa. Mm. So it was a real battle. Because they were always looking for that flight. They knew that flight carries... They knew it carries... They can uh, shoot it down or anything. But because it was under United Nations, they couldn't. Yeah. Southland, and then from Southland, we went to... We went to Tanzania mm. in a place called the Dakawa. In that place was an MK... Um, what do you call that? Transit camp. Yes. 
It was a transit camp where you have been told, for instance, of our age. I lied about my age because Panim Lokane didn't like people who were going to school. He says, you run away from school home, you want to join another school away from home mm -hmm. while people are dying. Mm -hmm. So it was a big influence to some of us who were so radical. Remember, we were coming from an, an age, uh, we were coming from a, a time of um, what we call neglecting. So burning, it was really our motto. Mm. So Banim Logana also advised us, some of us, we young lions, that the uh, Oliver time is going to come before you can join him Konto He doesn't want children to MK. Mm. You must change your, your ages. Oh, wow. Uh, we didn't have ideas. It was age. Mm. Uh, he said to me, hey, Kijan, you tell him who die. Well, well now, by height, you are short, but you are 19 years. Yeah, you are red. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I came, he came, oh, uh, and he said he's going to give you toys and some sweets, and he's going to bring ice cream. To if, see how you pay. If you take those sweets and... <laughs> And uh, <laughs> ice cream. Yeah. You won't go to Angola. You won't be a soldier of MK. You are a kid. Yeah, he came. He, he, they gave me. I said, no, I don't eat this. I want meat. Yeah, <laughs> chinyam. Chinyam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was put in that side. My colleagues... Some equal, fell for it. My colleagues equal at my age. Yeah. I was general. So they, see, some of those, they, left, they went to school. I guess they're liking. They were taken to some of You know, if there's one thing I feel that after 94, our government didn't do, ne, is to document these stories, what happened in exile. I think that consciousness, uh, 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 because being deprived of that history and you still go and study the history of Napoleon Bonaparte and everything, it's not helping us. I mean, the story that, that you are taking here it's, it's a movie itself. Hey. Mm. Now, the ANC was well infiltrated. Mm. Even some leaders that uh, our president, Oliver Tam, mm. didn't want to mention. Mm. They are the ones who made him to suffer the stroke. The, the political dwarfs. There were, peop there were people there who were self-centered, who have never had an interest of liberating the people of this country. And the 99% of them was, were stuck in Zambia. They wouldn't allow the ANC to write that history mm -mm. because it pains them badly. You understand? You remember the, the Christian letter? Yes. Yes. If you read that letter and compare that letter to the current ANC, you will see what Chris perceived and some things that were happening. And when I was reading uh, Chris Hannes' book, I learned that at some point he nearly was killed yeah. by uh, also senior members of Condoleezza because of what he got to know at that yeah. time and what he believed in. Yes. Mm. And... Uh, I was a bodyguard of Christian for, some, for so many years in exile. I personally bodyguarded. That man was well bodyguarded, almost equal to OR, because the dangers that he was facing internally and externally. Um, I, can, I can openly say, say that Christian would have joined the Jacobson to form this current party. Right now? Yes. I can, he was never a happy Christian. So this party And that's right why now, even in exile, he didn't have friends. He loved MK soldiers more than anybody else. There's no battle that he has ever missed. I'm, I'm sensing that uh, soldiers like you, 
uh, you you are not you were not happy with the status quo in the ANC that it pained you so bad because you suffered for this freedom that you are having. And then uh, since ninety four, there are people who just mushroom from somewhere who took the front seats and they are leading the country. And now, uh, as maybe when Jacob Zuma came, wanted to fix such things, then he was passed out of the system. Exactly. Uh, coming back from outside, yeah. when uh, DJ Capuchino, we came back, although OR was trying to give an impressive picture, mm. we came back as a divided ANC. You were not happy. There were, there were some of us who were anti the negotiations, Capuchin. You wanted war? Because the battle was complete. While the Cubans were busy in Angola, capturing those sad of people, mm. we were mooring the, what do you call, the Buffalo Battalion, which was involving uh, allied, allied forces, your France, your America, your UNITA, your, uh, what do you call this, this thing of IFP? Mm. It was part of them. We were fighting in the Northern Front. That battle was a collective, collective battle. You can ask the Cubans. The ANC will never mention that battle because 99% of our leaders were never part of that battle. They, were, they wanted to go home at all costs, even to compromise us. And you spent years training. Exactly. Training. Now they tell you, uh, throw away the arms. We were, not, we were not really the Capuchin. You could see white people when they go to Cortesa, they go with the bulk of documents. For us, we go with that, uh, what do we call it? That black book. The choir. Hey, we will go with that book. Only one. The whites will come with the uh, eggs and so on, and they put us on their eggs. Even the so-called integration, it was never an inter integration. Mm. We were imposed into the system. White people never removed their uniform. We were told to leave our uniform, uniform behind. So during those negotiations, were you happy with President Cyril Ramaphosa being part of the negotiations? No, we questioned where does this man come from? <laughs> I didn't even know whether this man is a politician or what? I only saw him when he go, went to receive Mandela with an umbrella, carrying. I didn't know whether he's a bodyguard or what. We didn't know that man. So it's true that at some point, uh, Ubaba Oliver Tambo asked to Ubanilo. Exactly. Everybody questioned. We also questioned ourselves. See him for the first time. For the first time. Read his uh, struggle credentials. You can't find Cyril political. People are imposing things on Cyril. Cyril is staying, telling them he was a leader of a church, youth church. He was never anywhere political. He was planted on us. But then uh, I heard that when he was at the University of Limpopo, he was with Botera and uh, there were also, at some point they had problems with the apartheid. Cyril, that part is not read well. Cyril was planted to our hotel. Hence, he was not released. You remember, this is a, a son of a police surgeon of the old system. And Cyril was also a constable in the old same, same system. He was even awarded with the award, I don't know for what, maybe for pimping or something. Because there was no policeman who was awarded during the, the apartheid system. A black policeman was not recognized by the government. Mm. Hey. So we fought in that part. And, and uh, Chris Arnie was not happy. He was not happy. Just imagine, Umkondo when gets disbanded in 1993. Ask what are we doing that time? That time was still in the bush. We were training soldiers. We were preparing soldiers so that if the white minority regime can change its minds, at least there are forces that can still take the struggle on. Because at that time, Sadaf was, was at its weakest. 
Remember the, the parents of those uh, captured the soldiers of Sadaf had formed their, their own organization, the anti conscripts organization, which they didn't want their children to fight anymore or be forced to train in Sadaf. It was at its weakest. But the enemy within the ANC enforced that we must go for negotiations. At some point, our commander came to us in Uganda, John Mutis, while comrades were frustrated as with all these things happening. He came, you see, he laughed at us, at our comrades, you are wasting your time here. Imagine our command. Are to me, you are like a drop in an ocean. And look what I'm wearing. I'm wearing a flusham for the first time after so many years in exile. And he became the first minister of defense. Yes. He was said, rewarded. He was rewarded. He said uh, to us, he was in, in a submarine for three weeks. We were busy wasting our time under these trees. But you must go home, comrades. Mm. There, there's a newly formed franchise called the Chicken Leaking. You will really enjoy it, comrades. It's nice. That it's thing. nice. It's called the hot wings. But this is sad. <laughs> that is the man. And in the submarine, they probably brought oh, people in the sub to entertain In the submarine, uh, commander was very happy. And he knew we knew nothing about submarine inside. Hey, so it was a luxury for him. Yeah. Hey, that's why even in the integration, they didn't fight for us. Where was Tabombeg when Ooh. these things were happening? Tabombeg was still striving to be a president of the country. He has been an ambitious man for many years. And he has never visited us in Angola. Mm. He only came to Uganda when Mandela was coming to visit us. To position himself. That's when he came and, uh, and, and he told us that we think we are more superior than the rest of the people in, in South Africa. Are, he said people in South Africa, they sleep on, on streets hungry, uh, comparing us to hobos now. And when Mandela called him into order, it's live what I'm saying. We were in Uganda. The hatred from me to Tabumbek was even more than ever before. Because political, we didn't even know him. We knew him as a son of our, of our leader who was in Dropping Island. We know nothing about what he did. You know people, when they like you, they can write good stories about you. Mm -hmm. The same as when they don't like you. They can create mm -hmm. other stories. Yes. So people rely on media in many things. I want us now to move to... Because I, 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 I feel like we can have an episode only on what happened in exile. Because I feel like there's a lot of stories that happened there. But I want us to move to where we are right now. Uh, late last year, you decide to form this part. What really motivated... I've heard President Zuma saying uh, he's trying to fix the ANC by forming what you have right now. But maybe you can take us through... What is the, the, the ideology around the party that we're having right now? Um, you know, President Zuma, he's a chess man. You can't beat him in that game. Can you bring him? I want to, 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 to challenge him. Chess. He's a chess man. I, I want to play chess with him. Yeah. I'll, I'll organize that for you. Assembly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you can't analyze or understand JZ, you are, you, are, you are at a risk of misinterpreting him. The president is more important about the people more than the ANC. Mm. He thinks and believes, the president, that everybody should have been belonging to the ANC because the ANC was a formation of our kings and the pastors, traditional healers. It was an inclusive organization. So with this ANC betraying the people of the country, the ANC that goes to conferences 
and form commissions, different uh, good commissions, speaking to land, speaking to economy, speaking to this and that, how to deal with poverty, including the security cluster commission. But they implement none. When we are sitting in those commissions, others are representing the Stellenbosch Mafia. Go and listen, oppose this, or don't oppose it. Just make sure. Inside the NC. Inside the NC. The NC being led by someone who appeared holding an umbrella. Then an umbrella man. An umbrella man came in. You, know, you see, in those so-called nine wasted years, I think there's only one year that was a waste of year. It's when we brought Cyril to become the deputy president of Jacob Zoom. That, is, that was a real wasted year. The rest, they speak volumes for themselves. Mm. It's things that we, we can analyze or discuss them again. So you still maintain that what the party stands for, which is Mkondo says, is to fix the NC. No, I've got nothing to, to fix in the NC. The ANC is rotten to the core. You'll spend a lot of trillions. What is, what is after trillion? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> you can waste that amount if you try to fix the ANC. I mean, look at the province here. Mm. They've got an unknown provincial secretary. I don't know. That man, I've never seen him in the history of the ANC. He became the provincial secretary. Now he's hitting them very hard. They are not on the list. He's dealing with them. He's hitting them very hard. So they hear stories they are crying. They thought to keep up so handy. Hey! You, do you know how I got to get your number? Hey. Just Talk with DJ Capacino is hosted by Merupa Casino and Entertainment World. There's so much you can do at Murupa Casino. Let me tell you what I do, how my day looks like. I start at Casper Restaurant, I have breakfast, the freshest breakfast ever. Fresh fruits, yogurt, cheese, and anything that I need for breakfast. And after that, I move to Wild Things, where I can even go to Best Park, Snake Park. But what I enjoy mostly at Wild Things is the pools. I swim until I get tired, because swimming is exercise, it's refreshing, and it's beautiful. After that, I go to House of Ashante for a massage. They know what they're doing. I'm telling you, when those people touch your body, you'll never be the same again. After that, I move. I go to the casino itself to play the slots. I always win, and I don't know why. Every time I go play something at Miropa Casino, I just win, 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 no matter what. Then after that, I go to Marimba restaurant to have my freshest steak. And remember, by that time, it is in the evening. And after having my steak, or oh, the, lamb the lamb shank, which I believe that is the best lamb shank in town. That's when I go to Jembe Lifestyle to have fun. It's nice. People come there. I network. There's always someone to talk to. There's always a stranger who says, hi, how are you? And that's the reason I go there. And after that, I go to Miropa Hotel, call it a night in those white sheets. Just talk with DJ Capuchin. I went to Facebook. I said, I need contacts of a leadership of MK in the province. Four people from the NC send me your number. Yeah, because we, Four have, people from the we have numbers within themselves. And I was like, oh, man, <laughs> system lay. How does it work, this thing? I can tell you, four people, and I, I, uh, guys, don't come and ask me who are those people. Four people, and I was like, no. These people want me to have your number. Yes. <laughs> you understand? And then it got me thinking that uh, uh, what's coming here could shock many. Mara, I also noticed that uh, you, you, you also wanted to have something. Is it Sasela Mani? Hey. And I don't think things went according to plan. I know things went according to plan. Remember, we had three events. Mm. The president spoke to, to Mahosh. Yes. Once you speak to Mahosh, imagine constituencies. Mm. 
that they carry behind. We had your traditional healers. Yes. We had our pastors. On the third event of Sasalaman, at the end of the day, the stadium was full, but the president had to leave because of the weather. He came with a chopper mm. and he was going to leave. We advised him through his pilots that the president must fly with this thing mm. before the storm. You remember that there was a storm. Yeah. He, he flew to uh, M. Singh mm. to address another rally. We continued with our rally there. It looks like you, you have a very well-oiled machine financially. Ah, we are broke. Our policy here in MK is we are working from zero budget. We are broke. Aye. Even the business people here mm. in the bomb, mm. they are scared of this ANC. They can't help you. Oh, they can't help us. But watch the space on the 29th. I'm going to have one million friends in the province. After the 29th. They'll be fighting to make parties for me. Me, I, I met you. I must be there. <laughs> I, I, must, and, I must be there. And at that time, I would have stopped even drinking alcohol. Yeah. I want to put the badge of the ZTC here. Because they want to give, so want to give you... So that you don't bring me a <laughs> gift of alcohol. I think a guitar is see you. Yeah. Just for a period of a month. You know how rough they are. Mm, mm. Eh? But how would you define the core ideology of the party? The core ideology of the party, first and foremost, uh, Capuchin, is to change the constitution. We need a constitution that is majority-based. Not a constitution that is so selective in our own motherland. The second one is to get our land back. The third one is to give the land back to its rightful owners, our kings and queens. But can I ask something? <laughs> yeah. when, when President Zuma was president, what stopped him from bringing the land back? In the ANC, as I told you, um, Capuchin, why do you pull this way of the majority? There are those who are pulling on the side of the majority. They get calls from Stellenbosch. Exactly. And the, you need a certain percentage uh, in, a, in parliament. You need the two thirds to change the constitution so that it can favor you at the end of the day. But many forces were used against the Zuma. You remember you, you Zuma must fall and all these things. Mm. Some of them, the same umbrella men, joined those people against his sitting president. And he was speaking things out of the NWC meetings about And our, nothing was done. It was done about our own president. EFF gave him two thirds. But here's the two thirds. But here's the two thirds. Changed cross number 25. Change it. Or oh, that man decided to form a structure of his own friends. How do you discuss the resolutions of the ANC from outside? It was a delaying tactic. With lawyers, we need to find, we must investigate. Exactly. What do you investigate? What do you investigate? Here is the two thirds. You just scratch that thing and reverse the land back to its rightful owners. And I'm, I'm beginning to with all these parties that are mushrooming, that there will never be that outright two-thirds again. Ah, uh, two-thirds is there. Even though I won't tell you the secret behind it, but I've seen it with my own eyes. It's there. Mm. Let those who are dreaming continue dreaming. The, the goodest thing that we can do for them is to build hospitals next to where they are staying so that they don't collapse trying to go and sleep at medic clinic. When it's happening? When, when, when they announce the results. I know most of them are diabetic. They won't tolerate it. Imagine Gerindo being told that uh, you have lost the country. Look at that body with too much alcohol. <laughs> Obviously, we'll find him on the first floor in Medi-Clinic because he will be the first. 
Like there's going to be change. And the, the good thing is that Stan won't even get the results. He will be drunk by then drinking a 15-year clan finish. He's not a serious man in politics. As long as got his coat and one bottle of clan finish, it's fine. He won't even see that people are struggling with water and electricity. Mm. More especially the city, uh, citizens of Sishik. What is your party's vision um, around economic development of the country? Economic development of the country will be determined by the change of constitution. And it starts with the land. We must change the constitution. And the land must belong to its rightful owners. Marosi, Liboros Rati. Once you do that, I'm telling you, Kapachin, this studio, you will be sitting in Sheraton Hotel. Mm. There will be catering when you are talking to us. Yeah, you saw we, we had to, to ask for money to get water. Yeah. That's how struggling we are. And I think uh, after my interview, you might lose a lot of uh, people. I might lose a lot of people. Yeah. Ah. The way the ANC is so dumb. No, no, but we... They are, too, they are too personal to us. With us, we want... Uh, different voices. We were having action, exactly. action SA, yeah. and then we are journalists. Yeah, I we, we lose, some will gain. It's fine. It's fine. But the truth must be we're told. here to give you a platform. Yes. Uh, uh, it's not my voice. Yeah. All I want to know is to ask, and I'm intrigued by the things that you're saying. Yeah. So losing or what? Ah, it matters not. Ah, well, we don't have even much. I mean, yeah. yeah. But what I can tell you is that I think this is going to be one of the historic uh, interviews. Moments. And then I think that uh, we are honored to have somebody like you in a relatively new podcast like this. I'm, I'm even thinking that I, I, I'm a little bit unprepared for this. But I'm also thinking because of, I want to, to uh, remember, I want to drive it to a point where people see why they must vote for MK. So... I would love to sit with you about the history. I, I want to know about the first night in, in exile. Where did you sleep? The first meal you got? The struggles and everything. I think that will come another day. But now, because we are going to elections, I'm pushing you so that... you Because we, we took a decision that we want to give people, inform our people, so that when they vote, they go to the a polls being informed. And that's what we are trying to do today. Hence, I'm asking you about uh, uh, anything economic development-wise that you think is unique, you think is different from other parties uh, uh, from MK. I remember, uh, Capuchin, mm. there, there are some policies that you can change. Even remember 1986, OR1 said, not everything that has been done by the enemy is wrong. Some of them were good. We can take the wrong ones and improve on them. You can also use the strategy of the enemy to hit it back. Remember, the NC has got very good policies. Very good policies that are not implemented. And there's no willingness to implement mm. it. And it will never be there. The president of MK, Jacob Zuma, is a man of practicality. He wants to practicalize a lot of them. Yeah, to, to, to be coming out of retirement and going to the front line again, Surely there must be something burning in him. Zuma has never retired. He has been hard at work mm. to change this ANC until to the last solution. Mm. And he remembered that my soldiers are here. I'm not wanted in the ANC. They are lingering the streets, very poor, with nothing to recognize them. And you are the reason the apartheid government wanted to negotiate. Exactly. That pressure. That, that exactly. pressure. Actually, we revived the dead ANC in exile. The ANC was long That's dead. where the ANC was at. Literally. Yes. Mm. Yes. 
So there was no other thing. The spear had to come in. But what would you say to people uh, who say the MK party is formed by people who are disgruntled? Uh, people who have uh, corruption shadows and uh, 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 they're in trouble with the law, most of them, and they need this thing to save them? Um, firstly, before they they speak like that about us, they must speak about their own disgruntled president who's always sleeping on TV. We are not disgruntled, we are vibrant. We want to bring back our land that we fought for. Anyone who joins MK will be somebody who's getting a chore of AIDS. That when I go there, it's like getting a treatment of this disease. I'm going to be chored after joining. Why are you sitting with this kind of load shading? All of a sudden, the electricity is there until 29 May. From 29 May, People are going to 16 hours. Uh, what is what? Lord no, you'll be in charge. Okay. Eh? You'll be in charge. Oh, it's us. You'll be in charge. You are rescuing them from that 16 hours of load shedding. Yeah. What, what measures would your party implement to combat corruption in ensure that there's transparency, <laughs> accountability? Um, firstly, we want our government to be under the hands of Amaros. You see, nowadays, they are using our kings to account to a mere counselor mm. in his own land. Mm. 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 They decide for Maros. They discuss ma issues of Maros in parliament without their presence or contributing. So in our people's mandate, we are saying people must tell us what they want. It's people who must tell us, Comrade Capuchin. It's yourselves how the media should run. We mustn't come here and promise you that after this we'll keep a triple PEE or what what. People must tell us what they want. If people want hospitals in each and every village, that is their democratic right. That's why we want Maroshi, the pastors, a traditional. Leaders must be part of that parliament. We don't want ambitious people here who come and put their names on the list. I will come with an umbrella <laughs> on the day of inauguration. It's dangerous, that umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, I, I see you have plans on community, community engagement, especially with regard to the traditional healers. But how does your party plan to engage, you know, communities to, he to at least to be able to hear other voices, because you are in a terrain of Limpopo. I think we have unique needs. We have unique problems. Uh, uh, like, have you formed a strategy around engaging the communities around Limpopo and also around solving Limpopo's problems? We are, we are doing that, uh, Governor Cappuccino, at uh, almost every day. We are engaging with people but we don't want to give people a wrong impression. Mm. Remember our slogan, Asibabizanga Bazizel. Okay. We didn't call people. People came because they see a future out of MK. Mm. But we have structures that are, in, are intervening. And we don't want to make special, uh, what do you call, special visits, divide our people. Mm -mm. That we must meet this class. We can promote classes here. We want an equal, a united, equal society in South Africa. One united South Africa. We will meet people equally. There will be no special arrangements. The only special arrangement currently that we are making is to meet with the kings, the rightful owners of the country. Yes. Yes, of the land. Those are the people that were giving a special attention currently. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very stylish person in terms of fashion. Hey, your t-shirts, your apparel. Yeah. Hey, you have a designer there, man. Yes. To a point where uh, I would wish to wait, but 
I know that the emblem of Kondo will work against me as a journalist. Yeah. Who yeah. must be neutral. Yeah. But and I'm, I'm, I'm admiring the, the quality, the texture. Of you the must texture. have one in your room. Just hang it there. Yeah. Where I, I might need it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hope you brought me a plastic <laughs> a, a, a package, you know. I'll do that when I'm coming from KZN. Yeah. 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 No, no, no. In all honesty, uh, you know, in my position, as a journalist, you get to admire certain elements of other parties. Hey. You wish you can uh, even just have a T-shirt that has all of them and everything. And I think uh, having such a special T-shirt from you, uh, it won't mean anything except for the fact that I'm also supporting some of the parts. Like when you're talking about land, I get moved. Yes. Yeah, I get moved because every time I'm driving and I see just fast land, hey. uh, 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 I see fans and I don't even know what these people are doing inside. It always pains me. I always take videos and I'll post maybe on Twitter and say our land. Hey. So I think with regard to that, we really, really, really agree. Is that like I am trying to find what exactly you represent? Uh, 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 it shouldn't be people who... In eyes of men, it's like you follow Zoom. Hey. <laughs> I would love to know exactly. Uh, uh, and I know that you are a young part. I think you're the youngest part. The youngest. Yeah. Four months or five months. Yeah. You're already battling with the heavyweights there. Yeah. But I would also love to believe that most of your ideologies also you draw them from the NC. You see. So that's why I'm saying that I feel like uh, most of us, we grew up singing... Shaya mapon, boya boya mkondo esis. Like it's stamped in our hearts. So when I'm engaging with you, it's not necessarily even far away from the ANC. And when also you look at even other parties now, they still have a little bit element of what the ANC represent. Yes. So it's 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 really 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 good. But I want you to speak to Limpopo people now, uh, as if you are on the podium, and I'm holding an umbrella. <laughs> You know, speak to the heart of Limpopo. Even though you can even face this camera and tell them why they should vote for MK. Um, our province, people that must remember, is, is a vast rural area, rural uh, province. It's a province that needs more changes in terms of the people that lat latrines. It's an area where you can invest more agriculturally. But some, the land that they are occupying, it can't produce anything because the land is still in the hands of the poorest of, it's still in the hands of the majority, the minority regime. But main thing, the issue of water. We are struggling with water under this government of Ukoko. People need to want water more than anything else. If I were to be a premier tomorrow, I would give the people of water, water. I will never go and bring Abom Nada, Abom Makaz, while people are struggling with water. Why where, waste that money? Where did, where did that happen? It happened in the last by, by election before the air council was arrested. In what ten here in the, the NC brought Monada. The NC was there, popping up expensive whiskies led by John Mbe. While the people in, in that area don't have actual actual John doesn't care about what I think he doesn't drink what. He doesn't know the purpose of water because he doesn't drink what. The people of Limpompe, if they want to clean this nonsense, they must come with to take up so. Look what he did to him, yes. That's what I think we must do also. We must take the ownership of people of War 10 without marginalizing people in the rural areas. The most voting people in the Mboba from the rural areas, people who drink water in the streams where they share with the donkeys and cows and so on, Ouch. under the government of the NC. Our children don't stop and fall falling into people at prince after 30 years exactly after 30 years of democracy you always blame apartheid as if you are dead and most of you were leading in the NC. exactly 
We have fought for that. But you were leading in the NC. We were leading, but we were marginalized. The gatekeeping keeping in the NC is very high. Hence, to, hence it was necessary to form Umkoto SA's party. It's because you couldn't penetrate. People don't mind to fail to vote. Even the women can't vote for women in the ANC to become chairpersons of provinces. Imagine Basati was very much in the ANC, but they can't use them because they're very much in touch with corruption. But we got the pumpers, but we got one of the pumpers who the chairperson in branch, Yam Sad, but they were all maternity. But we got the pumpers who voted wrongly. We gave them a woman. Yeah. But we attached her as if uh, they were brought by marriage in the ANC. Those people, they came from different structures to different join the struggles. ANCs. Yes, they voted individually. Mm. Hey, you know I was expecting Gosazana Zuma to join you. Well, has he ever been? Has she ever been part of the meetings or something? No, she has never been part of our meetings. And she's retiring in politics now. No? She's retiring, but nobody retires from the ballot box. Mm. As long as you can still work, I think if my pizza is going to join us, otherwise it's going behind the bus. What, what, what went wrong there? What? what? Because I looked at it and I was like, in fact, I, I posted a picture of uh, President Jacob Zuma when he was still on the dock, you still remember? Yeah. And I also posted... Mapisa. And I was like, this could have been avoided. I don't know. Not under my boss. Maybe under Zuma, it could have been avoided. Maybe I was using the DJI, you know, because yeah. we don't know these things. But I was like, this could have been, because there's, a, there's one again when President Jacob Zuma was, I think it's taking particulars when, when, when he was going to jail. Yes. I was like, we can't be seeing this. It can't. There's nothing that angered me most in, in the NC than that one. We can't be seeing that. At that age. And the, the, the umbrella man is still going to arrest men. Especially after the 29th. Exactly. They must do the right thing, stay in parliament, drink cold water, get your salary, and vote on controversies. While earning. Exactly. That, that parliament is free for all. But have you engaged uh, with Mama Pisa before? Who? As in Kondo. No, they've got eyes and ears. By the way, I trained her. Mm. She's my soldier. She knows I'm, her com I'm his commander. Mapisa, we told them the tools of analysis. Mm. You must analyze the situation. Imagine myself sitting in the ANC, in the SACP being led by Solima Paila, a mechanic. Some of the things are just jokes in the ANC. Mm. Mapisa Nagula and her colleagues must do the right thing. Well, she's from MK. Yes, member, members of Mkondo, including Abolindi Wezulu and the rest. Mm. They must pack their bags and go and come here. But there are no positions that are, are put there for anybody. I'm getting a sense that there is no return back to the NC. Ah, uh, there is not. There is not. Hence, I said, the issue of hospitals next to their families are very key. Now, I know that um, our interview started a bit late and you also need to rush to another meeting. Yes. Hence, I was tr tr trying to move it and also so that you can also say the gist of the matter and things that we really mu must address. Yes. I really appreciate you coming and also I appreciate your patience, uh, especially we had some logistics before. But uh, uh, after the 29th, I'm going to have whiskey for you here. <laughs> and we, we're going to talk about uh, uh, exile, you know, uh, and even besides, uh, even beyond the cameras and everything, I think I'll keep your contact okay. to, to learn, uh, okay. especially even the tools of analysis. I think they will help this program a lot. But I really appreciate you. Thank you very much for coming. No, thanks, uh, Capuchino, for inviting this disgruntled man. I hope you have seen by yourself. Yeah, no, no, I see you are disgruntled. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs>
Just talk with DJ Cappuccino.